One of our staples here is our homemade pierogi, or what we call vareniki in Ukrainian. Every day, we start our day here at 8 a.m. Our team of uh, six ladies who make the pierogies come in, they start their prep of uh, the dough and their fillings. The rest of the team joins by nine or 10, and we will produce, on average, between two and 3,000 in the course of their work day, per day, with up to four or 5,000 on weekends. The ladies now are making our, our most popular filling, which is our potato and cheese. They're shredding boiled potatoes. They're adding farmer cheese, a little bit of egg, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of cream of wheat, and then they'll do salt and pepper as well. And they all get blended together by hand. That's the lure of what we do here. I mean, everything's handmade and you know, it's a, it's a labor of love. And these ladies come in here and do this every day without complaining. It's something that they love to do. And that's something that's very typical in Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian food. It really comes from the heart. This is the base of the pierogi or bereniki dough. Oil, milk, and water. So now he's mixing in the flour with the, the wet mix. So they keep adding a little flour to the right consistency. This is a field process. They make this every day so they know what they like. And now they're gonna put it on the sheeter to get the proper thickness for the pierogi. Again, another key piece of equipment here. They used to take the dough and just hand roll it, but now this uh, has proved uh, indispensable. It's brought onto the table. They have these cutters that are pre-measured that we had made. They're off and running and there's no waste. All the cuttings they'll reuse again when they sheet new dough. It's no exact science, there's no weight measurement, and they're just filling each pierogi with the filling as they feel comfortable. Some places might have this automated to a scoop or to a measurement, we, we don't have time for that. You might have a pierogi that might have a little extra or a little less, but in the end, it, it all comes out to the same. We've looked at other options, you know, there are, there are pierogi making machines now, but once my father retired in 2020, he told me don't mess with the recipe, don't mess with what's gotten us here. So we continue to do it by hand. They're able to produce better than I would say any automated process. An automated process would take some mechanics and if things break down, somebody has to fix that. The women don't break down. They, you know, unfortunately they retire or they move on, but I'm very fortunate that they love what they do. The crimping's done and now she's par cooking them. She's just stirring them and they'll stay in here until they float. And then they'll get cooled down here because of the, the great quantities that they made and then we'll finish these upstairs either boiled or fried per customer's request. The vareniki pierogi that we serve here are offered two ways, boiled or fried. Pierogi or vareniki means comfort and through that comfort there's love. When the ladies are preparing that, they're preparing something that you're gonna love. Just reminds me of my grandmother. My grandmother would say, if you were to come eat here, you're gonna feel like you're coming to grandma's house. You're never gonna leave hungry. Olesha Lu is our executive chef. She brings a lot of expertise in Ukrainian cuisine and its history. Pani Slava has been working for us. Jak dolho vy vje dolho vy pracujete tu, Pani Slava? 15 years, Pani Slava has been making our iconic potato pancake. We make between 400 plus a day to make it through our service. Slava salts in the beginning and then she salts again because she wants the potato to get slightly softer but not to denigrate. There's no problem, recipe. This salt, X, it is it. Slava is almost like an extension of my grandmother. She really loves what she does. She's always in a good mood. She loves cooking. She loves working as a team. Her potato pancakes are divine. She has about four burners on and she does about five potato pancakes per pan. Just watch her hands. It's like that perfect measure. And that's just muscle memory in this hand. So when I sometimes make with her, she puts in my hand several times and tells me, remember, remember. But just watch her hands. She knows exactly the amount. People ask us, can you do this in a fryer? Absolutely not. <laughs> They'll get lost. She spins them around to make them even. She knows exactly when to flip. It's crispy on the outside, but it's still custardy on the inside. There's that balance, you know? And look at her utensils. Nothing special. Oh, you want 
enough. A lot, she said. Rachujte, jak šel kožen den, ovšem, no, když 300 kožen den, 300, za 15 roky. When they hot, it's not the color, this night, it's when they skin chin. Ah, po koloru. This color ready. This no ready. So I'm preparing the pans to lay the potato pancakes in because there is a little bit of oil in them and we want it to catch the oil when we send it upstairs. Where we're located here was a much larger Ukrainian community in its heyday in the 50s and 60s. This community was always a, a haven for Ukrainians. I think there's a lot of history here where we're at and for being here as long as we have, people love to know that mom and pop places like us are still surviving. You know, food scene here is very diverse, but I'm proud to say that serving consistent Ukrainian food over the years has been our draw to all types of people that want to come enjoy a home cooked meal. Since the outbreak of the war, I've been an advocate for raising monies for different charities, but I thought what better way to give back if an employee had some family that was in an area where they needed to get out. So I've, I've applied for more than 12 people, that, that which 10 have got accepted, and several of them work here now. Actually, these two ladies are sisters who came here shortly after the invasion started. This was not their background. They had a love of it doing it at home, but actually they're both in the medical field. I helped sponsor both of these ladies here to come here with, through the You For You program. I'm very for, fortunate to have them on, on board. Since the, the war broke out, we've changed our traditional black and white cookies to our blue and yellow cookies, which have been flying off the shelves, to experimenting and now serving our most popular dish, the medivique, which is very labor intensive, the honey cake with the variety of levels of sour, sweet sour cream. This is a traditional Ukrainian cake. Um, this recipe is actually from uh, Chef Dima, who I used to work with here maybe two years ago. His mom, uh, who lives in Ukraine, sent him this recipe, and now we make her cake here. Can't get any more traditional than that. For me, any recipe that comes from a mom is a keeper. <laughs> Lisa's been on staff almost 25 years, not of Ukrainian descent, but she's been very open to learning new ideas and understanding that Ukrainian foods are, might be a little bit different than your traditional American desserts. She prides herself in creating the most authentic experience that you'd want from a Ukrainian bakery. Put the honey and the butter together to warm the honey up. This just helps mix it to mix the sugar in. You don't get any lumps. It comes nice and smooth. It smells so good. You gently mix this, and you just want the bowl to feel a little warm. You want to make sure it's not hot. We're going to add the baking soda. Then we pour the lemon juice in it. Liquid and acid make a reaction with the baking soda. And this is just the way Dima's mom said she does it. So I follow tradition. I like to scrape this out onto a tray. This way I can make sure it's thoroughly mixed at the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to portion the dough out into 14 ounce pieces. And then each piece gets rolled into, we call it half a sheet tray size. You need six sheets for one cake. So I just try to get to the ends of the paper. It doesn't have to be quite perfect. And then just trim as close to the size of the paper as possible. That's one layer. So to store these, we stack 12 sheets on one tray. That's two cakes. I'm going to put them in the oven to bake, and then we'll frost it. I start the oven at 325. They bake for about six minutes. It takes a lot of room to bake the sheets. One oven per cake. So I'll lower this to 300 and set the timer six and a half minutes. I'm gonna mix the filling, which is equal parts sour cream and heavy cream. Confectioner sugar. So we mix this till it's soft peak. So it's just thick enough to spread onto the cake. We've had people come sit down for brunch and order it first thing. Table of eight came in, I think they sat down at 9.30 and they all ordered dessert first, then their meal. Now we'll cover this with the crumbs. The crumbs are graham cracker crumbs, cocoa powder, and walnuts. It's pretty dry, but the cream also soaks it up into that and makes a nice texture. As it sits overnight, the cream soaks into the layers and becomes a great height.
This is Yuri, one of our lead line cooks. He's going to start doing the stuffed cabbage. Right now we're going to do the meat one. Its origins come from the Silk Road. Ukraine was part of the Silk Road. So if you're familiar with some of the rolled types of vegetables coming from the east. But once it landed in our soil, we have an abundance of cabbage and it just seemed like the right vessel. And notice the meat is raw because we want it to kick off its natural juices, base the cabbage, and then it rehydrates itself. There is a lot of feel here. We have standard recipes, but you see how busy we are? It seems simple, but there's many layers of flavor in the food. The name for stuffed cabbage in Ukrainian is holovchi. That literally means a little dove. It looks like a little dove's head tucked into the wings. And it's become like a classic. They put it in a hotel pan, three layers deep. It cooks for several hours. Then we have to cool it, and then we have to send it upstairs. We've always had stuffed cabbage here on the menu. It's something of a staple as well, you know, cabbage being prevalent in Ukraine. We make a great combination plate, get the full, you call it, taste of Ukraine with the stuffed cabbage, pierogies, and a cup of soup of your choice, which we recommend borscht. We're super busy, we're starting our lunch rush. We not only do lunch, we're doing our takeout service. We have catering going today, and we're prepping out for dinner. And there's always something going on here at Veselka. Veselka translates to rainbow in Ukrainian, but I like the adage that we have where it says Veselka is love. The people who work here to produce the great quantities that they do, really want you to feel the love that they're putting into it. I do this as a labor of love, seeing people enjoying Ukrainian soul food. Please come, I want you to enjoy what I grew up on, Ukrainian soul food.